Hello everyone, I am Fatih Bali from EPFL and I will be presenting our work determining the core primitive for optimal secure entity. This work was done in collaboration with Paul Rosler and Serge Boudinet. I would like to start by stating our contribution. In the context of ratcheting, we have recently seen two primitives, a unidirectional ratcheted key exchange, or I will refer to this as URKE, and we have seen key updatable key encapsulation mechanism, or QCAM. Uh, we extend the security notions for these two primitives, such that we consider the randomness manipul manipulation as a realistic threat in the game scenarios. And in these extended security notions, we show that these two primitives actually imply each other. This informally means that building strongly secure ratcheting in itself is as hard as building key updatable public key primitives. Then I will first, in this presentation, then I will first talk about URKE and QCAM star. And then I will talk about how we extend our notion so that we consider randomness manipulation. And then I will give a very brief explanation of how our constructions work for two directions. We, in the, in the recently published two papers, one by Pertring and Rosler, we have um, observed something. Um, in crypto 2018, um, they have um, defined the uh, idea of the, the, the security notion of strongly secure ratchet as a mechanism that exchanges keys between two parties. Uh, in their construction, uh, the authors had used um, what they called key updatable key encapsulation mechanism. And this was in return instantiated uh, with the use of hierarchical identity based encryption. In the same year, independent from the previous uh, work, Jager and Stepanos also looked at the ratcheting uh, more from um, a data encapsulation type of uh, setting. And then they used key updatable public key encryption scheme to build their construction. Again, this was built on top of hierarchical identity based encryption. Therefore, we wonder whether key updatable key, key updatable public key cryptography is uh, in fact a necessary building block for strong ratcheting. And that is uh, the question we, uh, we, we um, respond affir affirmatively in this work. So let us briefly talk about ratcheting. So in this figure, uh, you can see actually what a real ratchet looks like. It's a type of wheel which can rotate only in one direction. And there is a device called pole which prevents it uh, going in the reverse direction. Uh, in the context of uh, cryptography, it has become popular with, thanks to the uh, signal messaging application because it uh, promises two things to users. It, um, uh, it's the post-compromise secrecy and the forward secrecy. And these are important, especially nowadays, because uh, we generally tend to have our phones for a very long time and then it is quite probable that they contain the same uh, application and then the same state inside those messaging applications. Uh, a simple analog analogy here is that the poll in this picture in this figure is the pu key updatable public key cryptography and the wheel is the messaging application. Uh, let us uh, look at these two notions very briefly. In a more conventional example, one would first set up a shared key between A and B which would be then used with the symmetric cryptography to exchange messages. However, this comes uh, with a disadvantage because if the if one of the parties state is exposed, then um, all of the past and then the future ciphertext can be decrypted and the messages can be recovered by the adversary. Therefore, we want to have uh, an improvement over this. So the post compromise secrecy means that if a state is exposed by a party, and at some point in the future, the communication itself will heal. And in return, forward secrecy means in the reverse direction. So if this, if the communication happened in the past, and if the state is um, stolen, stolen in the future, then the old ciphertext, um, they should not be decrypted by the adversary. From a more formal perspective, Ratcheting is actually a tuple of algorithms. It consists of init, init send and receive. Init will um, create 
states for two of the parties, SA and SB, uh, as denoted in here. We will give SA uh, to the party A and SB to the party B. And then in order to um, in order to establish a key between A and B, A can use the send algorithm, during which a key is uh, derived um, on the fly, and then the state is updated, and then an, an, another ciphertext is passed to the B. So the uh, from the syntax perspective, the algorithm looks like this, and it takes an additional associated data, which is uh, an optional data, it, and it could be empty if the user uh, desires so. On the B's part, we can similarly run the receiving algorithm. It would take the state SP, the same associated data, and it would recover the key from given ciphertext. In this case, we call it URKE because we look at the unidirectional case, meaning that the key update operations are only triggered by A, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we cannot give, uh, we cannot send messages to A. That, that is definitely possible. It just means that B does not initiate these uh, key update operations. Um, in the previous in previous work, uh, there has been actually some um, approach. Uh, to define the security of this ratcheting. Uh, first, there was an analysis approach by Cohen and Gordon et al. And then they um, tried to extract what security guarantees signal actually gives in the formal setting. And then it was followed by simple definitions and then later by bidirectional version, uh, again in crypto 2018, two uh, referred papers in the previous slides. And more recently, we have seen more relaxed uh, security notions uh, meaning that they are not necessarily the strongest and the game definitions contain some arbitrary um, attack eliminations, so to speak, but then they lend themselves to very efficient constructions. In comparison, in the in the third bullet, um, we, we have only constructions based on hierarchical identity, based encryption. Um, let us look briefly about what a security game for ratcheting looks like to get the idea. Of course, it contains um, a few oracles with which the adversary can interact. So the adversary, for example, uh, at the beginning of the game, A and B both receive and synchronized states. And the adversary can use send A to trigger um, sending operation and then uh, make A generate some ciphertext C1. And then similarly, it can run receive B and then uh, it can pass either the real ciphertext or something else. So the channel is control, controlled by the adversary and the adversary also have the um, have the power to expose the state of B. It can ask for some ciphertext keys to be revealed. It can also expose the state of A and eventually at some point it picks some ciphertext and challenges that ciphertext. And the game gives either the real key for the ciphertext or the random one. And the adversary tries to guess which, which is the case. The real problem um, in the actual definition is the what defines the trivial um, attacks in, in such a complicated setting. In some cases, we see that the these um, not necessarily trivial attacks are prevented uh, from adversary, uh, which means that the games are not necessarily the strongest ones. And in those cases, uh, you can actually employ classical public key cryptography and then you can just make do with those and then uh, have a provable security with respect to their own definitions in these papers. But in these particular cases, uh, what happens is that um, we don't know uh, a construction without hierarchical identity-based encryption. In fact, all of them are using, um, a three of them are using a key updatable public key crypto. This work is actually uh, focusing, focusing on this aspect of the ratcheting. I think I have talked uh, quite enough uh, for, for, for the ratcheting part and I would like to talk a bit more about the key updatable part now, key updatable public key crypto more precisely. Uh, so let's start with simple cam example. In the simple cam we would have a tuple of algorithms in it encapsulate and decapsulate. In it would generate a public key and secret key and then sender could use the public key to encapsulate some keys. Cipher text would be sent to the receiver and then in the decapsulation the receiver could uh, retrieve the original key and then they could use this key um, and with another uh, symmetric encryption scheme to uh, exchange messages. And then similarly, they could 
um, do multiple encapsulation and decapsulation uh, invocations. In the key updatable variant of the scam, now we will introduce two additional algorithms, update sender and update receiver. Update sender will take the public key and then provide a new public key for the sender. And similarly, update receive will take the secret key from the receiver and update into a new one. But it is very important to notice that there is actually no interaction between these two algorithms. So these are run separately and independently. And the correctness notion, of course, uh, requires that these two states are synchronized in the sense that they can still encapsulate and decapsulate. In, uh, from, a syntax, from a syntax perspective, we can also we also include associated data as input to update uh, sender and update receiver, but uh, that is not a part of interaction at all. In a, one more incremental step, now we can talk about the stateful variant, stateful variant that is the stateful key updatable chem. In this one, what we tweak is the encapsulation and then decapsulation algorithms. Uh, in a way that encapsulation also takes the public key and then updates a new public key. And similarly, decapsulation takes the secret key and updates a new secret key. Therefore, um, it seems as if that the encapsulation and decapsulations also do some inherent uh, key updates or state updates on each of the parties. Um, and also there's still uh, the, uh, the separate update state and update receiver update sender and update receiver algorithms in the definitions. Uh, it should be noted that encapsulation and decapsulation update through some communications, whereas update, state, update sender and update receiver is actually without any interaction. Uh, and how does one actually define the security notion for QCAMP star now? It's actually quite similar um, uh, in the fashion we define for the ratcheting. So again, the adversary has access to a bunch of Oracle, which can trigger the parties to um, update their state and at the same time uh, pro uh, produce some ciphertext. Um, it can also ask uh, ciphertext to be solved, meaning that the key is uh, given to the adversary. Uh, updates are also part of the Oracles now. And eventually, the adversary is um, supposed to challenge one of the ciphertext and actually guess the key. So this type of notion is not uh, indistinguishability, but it is more of a one way, uh, meaning that it is much weaker. Um, we, intentionally, um, we, we intentionally made it so, and then we actually have an incentive to make the security notion as weak as possible, because our ultimate goal is to actually make a bridge between something quite so strong, that is the ratcheting, and something uh, possibly um, easier to build. That is uh, hence the one-way um, notion here. I have um, now I want to talk about the randomness, randomness part of our contribution. Uh, so far in the very high level um, picture of the security notions, I did not really talk about the randomness at all. Um, but, but we can look at the randomness approach taken by the other uh, two papers. First, uh, uh, Pottering and Rosler in their uh, paper, they had actually considered a naive approach, uh, which means that the encapsulation algorithm was always assumed to be using secure and then the good distribution of randomness in the algorithms. In comparison, um, um, Jager and Stepanos, they uh, did a bit of different approach because they were allowing the state exposures. They also allowed the state exposure similar in the, in the randomness use. So they assumed that the adversary can actually read the random coins used by the algorithm as well. Um, but we also, but in this in this particular work, we want to consider something even more stronger so that it captures multiple uh, realistic scenarios. In this in this in this uh, third bullet, which I call inclusive, or as we can, we, we sometimes refer to it as uh, randomness manipulation, is the is the case where the adversary can actually control the randomness. So this is. Because this also captures a couple of scenarios. For example, it captures the scenario where the adversary um, partially picks some bits of the randomness, not necessarily all of them, through some kind of backdoor mechanism. Or it captures the case where the adversary knows some partial information on the entropy pool, but not necessarily the specific 
uh, invocation uh, random coin of encapsulation or uh, maybe uh, there is no malicious intent behind it's just the library that has a bad distribution for randomness generation and uh, in, in that case it's possible that the library is um, is uh, fixed later and then this is maybe uh, the update is pushed to the devices and then the maybe devices will eventually have uh, the actual correct implementations so our approach is again similar to the initial um, uh, healing property here so as soon as this attack vector is eliminated which is disturbing the randomness we want the communication to heal back to a secure state i can maybe explain this in a um, more simply by, by this uh, by this drawing here uh, again let's remember the ratchet uni, 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 um, unidirectional ratchet uh, exchange and it's a uh, accompanying security notion there we had the uh, send a oracle which was triggering a to produce nif ciphertext and at the same time I, a was a was internally updating uh, its own state here uh, the adversary can in the updated notion the adversary can either query as before or the adversary can enforce some random coins to be used so in this particular example let's start with a healthy state if it is healthy state and if the um, if the part if a uses uh, good random coins and then it actually initially arrives to a healthy state but let us assume at this point adversary exposes the state and learns what is the information here and then uh, suppose that the adversary further uses uh, bad random coins so the adversary actually picks the random coins and then uh, knows therefore knows the random coins and uses this algorithm and at that point, uh, of course, this state information is also known by the adversary because this algorithm could be run by the adversary uh, in parallel. And now um, we consider the case where the adversary actually um, lets the a, lets a run the honest random coins. And at this point, we expect the protocol to recover back to a health state and also the emitted cipher text we expect it to be secure. And at this healthy state, if the adversary now injects random coins, again we expect to arrive to our healthy state and we uh, expect to emit a healthy uh, ciphertext. And similarly, uh, regardless of how many times the adversary tries to inject uh, with the bad randomness, uh, as long as the adversary never exposes the state information through an oracle, we expect, um, we expect the communication to be secure um, as long as it goes. Therefore, this new notion actually captures um, something so stronger in that um, a cipher, cipher text CI is compromised if two of the two of the conditions are satisfied from the adversarial perspective. If the adversary knows the SA, the previous state that is, for example, in here, the previous state for C2 is known and also the random coins used to generate C2 is known. And that is the, uh, the only case that actually leads to vulnerabilities in this NIF setting. Um, I'd like to repeat my contribution statement again. So I said that um, the building ratcheting is as hard as building key updatable public key parameters in this randomness manipulation setting. For that, of course, one needs to show that one implies the other and then vice versa. Um, let us first look at the QCAM star to URKE transformation. So here, um, QCAM star again, as, as, as we've seen before, it consists of five algorithms, encapsulation, decapsulation, update algorithms, and then the initialization algorithm. And for, in the, in the other, for URK, we actually want to build uh, three algorithms um, and uh, basically generation. And we want, to, um, we want to define the send and receive algorithms. For that, we start by uh, running the generation from the CAM uh, algorithm. A public key and secret key on top of that we embed some shared key which is uniformly sampled at the beginning to the state of a and b in order to send this is what a does a first uses this public key and encapsulates and the ciphertext is the one that will be sent to b but uh, the output of the key output of the encapsulation will not be used as the key of the receive instead we will use this key ke and then we will merge it with this uh, shared secret key and then we will query hash and then we will take the output of the hash as the key. Okay, so we are done for the send, send algorithm. We are done with the K and the ciphertext. Now we have to think of the state information here. 
So we will again need some kind of shared key and then the public key. For shared key, we can again take the key as an output from the hash function. For the public key, we can first use the, the NIF state from the encapsulation and then we make an additional update from here and then we arrive to this state. And here we pass some AD information to the update as well. On the receiving part, things are just uh, similar in a synchronized fashion. Because we, because our ultimate goal is to derive the key, we have to make sure that the hash function gets the same inputs. KS is already here, so we have to compute KE, which can be done with the decomposition of this ciphertext. And again, the other uh, state update, update operations are similar. So we update the secret key by going through the same path. We feed the same AD to the update, and then we obtain a synchronized state with this one. Uh, this is actually a simplified version of our construction because I omitted some um, other details. For example, there is a mechanism which ensures that this ciphertext is authenticated and then B actually checks the authenticity of the ciphertext be before feeding it into the encapsulation oracle. Uh, let us look at the reverse direction. How can we construct from uh, URKE to QCAM star? In this case, uh, we want to build four algorithms, or five if you consider generation as well. We want to first think about encapsulation. In order to encapsulate, we actually do two send um, uh, invocations. Uh, um, but the first one with the random coins and the second one is with the fixed random coins. So the second one is actually acting like a deterministic algorithm here. And then the ciphertext information that we pass is actually the ciphertext from the send invocation. Also, we pass the intermediate state essay here. In the receiving part, uh, notice that in the, in the secret key of the receiver, we actually have the essay at the beginning, which is exactly the same with essay here. But we also have the SP, which is synchronized with SP. So we will use the ciphertext and then call the receive, and then we will get this SP. This intermediate value obviously is synchronized with this essay. Because we don't have the essay yet, we will actually take it directly from the ciphertext and then simulate this uh, deterministic algorithm and then follow the path accordingly and then run the, the matching receive for this simulation and then update the SP accordingly and then update essay accordingly. So that is how encapsulation and decapsulation would work. For updating, uh, the idea is similar. In the update case, we would actually just use send deterministic by fixing the random coins. Again, on the receiving part this time, we have to self-simulate the sending and use the output ciphertext to the receive and then update SA and SP accordingly and obtain this state. Here, um, an optional AD can be fed to send algorithms as well, but uh, this is not a requirement. Therefore, uh, these updates are actually without interaction, whereas this encapsulation decapsulation is with the, um, with the interaction. Again, I omitted some details which ensure the authenticity of this uh, ciphertext. So there's actually some step which runs before this, um, this C being fed into receive uh, so that uh, the adversary is um, prevented to do some uh, malicious ciphertext feeding attacks. Okay, so um, the, uh, the follow-up is this research could be uh, as follows. Uh, first, um, we have so far looked only at the uh, unidirectional case of ratcheted key exchange because of the complexity introduced uh, with the randomness manipulation. Introducing randomness manipulation um, takes a bit of toll on the security notions because now we have to think, rethink of all the trivial cases again and redefine clearly which new cases are introduced into security notion. And then um, the follow-up work could prove um, equivalence between QCAM star and this new bidirectional ratcheted key exchange. Doing so has this benefit of, um, of focusing on finding the efficient QCAM star primitive. Because uh, of the informal statement in, that we, ha we have, uh, we can just focus on the QCAM star primitives and um, which are easier to construct because the notion is much weaker because we only target the one-way uh, security here and the definition is much simpler. If we can build them much more efficiently without resorting to hierarchical identity-based encryption, we will uh, eventually have a strongly secure ratcheting 
Um, and I think that is the takeaway from our paper. Uh, with that said, I conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your time.